What's up guys, it's Cody here. Today we're gonna be changing it up just a little bit. Just wanna keep you on your toes. We're gonna change up the format. And the reason we're doing this, the reason I'm doing this, is because make it a little bit more fun. You know, you're looking at my face. Hopefully my face is a little bit more fun than just staring at my hand. My hands will be in the videos too if you guys got a hand fetish or something. But for the most part, I wanna go over my top five tweaks. I'm actually gonna hit six tweaks. But these are the ones that I'm using right now that I like a lot. These are my favorite tweaks right now. And by narrowing that down all the way down to six or five tweaks, I'm gonna be able to explain them a little bit more. And hopefully to both of our benefits, it's a little bit more entertaining. So if you guys end up liking this format, let me know by hitting the like button on this video. And if we end up doing more videos like this, then I might just get another camera to actually show a live feed of my, uh, my phone. So all you freaks out there that love looking at my hands can still look at my hands. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna do a screen recording. I think it's gonna be just fine. And I'm gonna be able to walk you through a lot of these tweaks. But enough talking, let's get into the tweaks. The first tweak that I wanna show you guys is called Gesto. This is a really cool multitasking tweak and it's going to combine the app switcher with the control center and then quick actions that I'll show you here in just a second. So if we go ahead and pull up just like we would to invoke the app switcher, you're gonna get your app switcher and then down at the bottom, you get your control center. So if we swipe to the left down on the bottom on the control center, you're gonna get some additional toggles as well as the brightness and the volume and then if you swipe again you can see the remainder of your toggles so if you have more toggles than this and you can keep swiping but for the most part this is how it works this is really cool and not only that but you can actually change where your control center is so all we have to do is pull this uh, app card over to the left a little bit and you're gonna see all these quick actions peek out. So depending on where your finger is lined up, so if my finger's lined up with the play button at the bottom, the lock that's right above it, the X or the respring, that's the quick action that's going to activate. So right now I still have my thumb down on the screen, but if I pull it and I'm aligned up with the play button, you can see that that play button highlights. But if I push it back over to the right, it's going to deactivate. So to activate this, all you have to do is just actually pull over, you're gonna see it highlight and then release. And that's all that you're gonna to have to do in order to activate those quick actions. So you might be wondering, well, what's the lock do anyways? It actually unlocks applications. So in this tweak, you can lock down apps so they don't get killed if you kills all your applications. So this is gonna be really helpful for tweaks like Apple Music or Spotify, something that plays music in the background and you don't wanna kill that application. So let's just say that we wanted to uh, lock down this app right here. So if I pull this down, you can see the little lock. Now it's locked. So now you can see the little lock down there at the photos right below the app card. But if we go over here and we pull this over to unlock them all, we unlock the Photos app. So that's really all that this does. Up here at the top, this is going to close all the applications, and then right up here is going to be your respring. So if we go down here to Gesto and tap on that, you can see all you have to do is enable the tweak, and then you have two options. You have the multi-side, which is what I have configured right now, and that's basically just the layout with the control center on the bottom, and then you also have side-by-side. -side. This is actually going to put that control center on the right side where those uh, quick actions were. So we're gonna set that up. Um, before we do that, let's actually look at the multi-side settings so you have several different settings here that you can mess with so you have your background you can change that from dark to light to none you have your headers your rows displayed keep in mind if you do download this you do have to set your rows displayed before it even works so right when you get it go into the settings set up your rows and then you'll see the control center. Cause I didn't do that initially and I couldn't see my control center. I thought it was busted. So just make sure that you set your rows displayed and your rows are just how many rows you show on your control center. So if I tap on four, I don't think I need to respring for just that to work. Let's see, no. So you can see all four right here. So if we swipe over, you can see the remainder of your toggles. You can change the position of your control center from the top to the bottom if you want to. And even for convenience, they've added the control center toggles right down here at the bottom so you can add those in if you'd like to. So now let's go back out and let's change it to side by side. So you also have linear switcher. This basically just kind of changes the look of your app switcher. We're gonna toggle that on. And then once it comes back, I can show you those changes that we've made. All right, so now we're resprung. So if we go ahead and swipe up, you're gonna see, first of all, that we've changed the linear switcher. So now we have the linear switcher where it's not layered app card, just like that. Now, if you swipe in the middle, you can see your control center's right there. So if we swipe over, it's gonna swipe over to the control center. So this is a really cool tweak. I think it's worth checking out. It is a few dollars, I think 
three or four dollars. I'll make sure to put the price on it in the video. But for the most part, I think it's worth it if you're looking for something new and fresh. Next, let's talk about Jumper. Jumper is another really cool tweak. It's another paid tweak, it's two bucks. But what it does is allow you to access any application that you want directly from your lock screen. So if we go to our lock screen here, you're gonna see these two buttons in the bottom and left hand corner. So it's basically replacing your uh, camera toggle and whatever else, I don't even remember what the other one was, the flashlight, yeah. I don't, what, it's like I never used an iPhone before. But see, you can set this up in a couple of different ways. Right now I have it set up to where I can uh, 3D press on these buttons and it's going to give me several applications that I can open up with. So I have my camera, Spotify, uh, Apollo, and then Carrot, which is my weather app. And then over here on the right, I have four more. I have YouTube, Instagram, YouTube Studio, and then TweetBot. So if I just tap on one of these, it's gonna open right up. So if I tap on Instagram, it should open up Instagram right here. You guys should check me out on Instagram if you're not following me on Instagram. I post a lot of tweaks on there prior to videos, so if you want a sneak peek, check it out. It's my shameless plug. Anyways, so if we jump back out here, you can see the thing that I don't like about this is that it doesn't use my theme that I have installed, it's using all the stock applications, which is kind of a bummer. Now there's a setting that you can set up and it tries to theme the applications. So if we go here to Jumper, open that up, there's not a ton of different settings you can set up here. Um, the first shortcut you can set up to multi multiple shortcuts, which is what I've done. And then if you don't wanna use that, you can set it up to use toggles that you can see right up there at the top, or you can have it open up any single particular application. So same thing goes down for the second shortcut. You can set it up to have one app, one toggle, or multiple shortcuts. So if you come down here, you can also use the styled icons. This is kind of what I was talking about, about theming those icons. And eh, it doesn't do a great job. It, it themes some of them, but not all of them. And for the most part, it doesn't look much better, I don't think. And you also have your notification badges right there. I think that looks bad just because I always have a lot of notifications. So it's usually just the first number and then ellipses after it, which just doesn't look that great. All right, so we're resprung here and you can see it's changed those buttons down there to ellipses. So now if we press on them, it's gonna be a little bit better themed, I guess, but you can see the top and bottom application, which is carrot and uh, the camera, which is weird that it doesn't have the camera. Um, those apps are just the default icon, whatever that is, I don't know what that is. But you can see over here, we also have the notification badges that just don't look good to me because like the YouTube, I have, you know, however many that is, but it just doesn't have the uh, application icons, which it just makes it hard to remember which ones they are unless you just know them by heart. So hopefully they can figure out how to use just the themed icons that I'm using from Anemone. That's really all that I'd want, but still a cool tweak and a nifty one at that. Next tweak I wanna talk about is Eclipse. Now I know a lot of you guys already know about Eclipse. It's been around for a really long time, but it continues to update it. It's still my favorite dark mode tweak. Uh, I install it every single time that I jailbreak my device and it's like $1.50. So in the settings for Eclipse, you just select the application that you want dark mode on and it does it, really simple. You don't have to respring or anything like that. You just gotta close out of the application and then it updates and then you have dark mode. So you can see right here that I have dark mode for my settings. I have dark mode for almost everything, but you can see if we go ahead and go into Eclipse, you have just your toggle to turn it on, then you have your application. So you basically just go through here and you toggle on all the applications that you want dark mode in, and it actually works pretty well. It even works inside of uh, Cilio, but you can actually change the colors. So if you go into color options, there are some actual uh, built-in themes that you can select. I like night the most, but you can do like graphite. So we'll change the graphite. We'll change everything to graphite. So you can also do custom colors if you don't wanna use those particular uh, pre-built baked in themes. But just to show you really quick, if I go ahead and close out of my settings app, just to show you what graphite looks like, and we open that back up, you're gonna see you're gonna get a whole lot lighter uh, look. So I like the dark and I like night. I don't like the midnight because it's just pitch black, but the night actually looks really good. Now the next tweak that I wanna mention just because it's awesome, uh, I'm not gonna review it in this, in this video because I've done an entire video on it. So if you guys wanna check it out, then I'll put a link in the description. I'll put a little app card thing. I've never actually used one of those things. And I just thought of it for the very first time. I'm gonna put a little link up there. If you wanna click on it, you can. But what it is, is CarBridge. CarBridge is an awesome, awesome tweak. What it does is allow you to use uh, any application inside of CarPlay. So if you guys have CarPlay, 
highly, highly recommend you get CarBridge. I think it's awesome. You can play YouTube videos in there. You can play Netflix in there. You can play basically anything. There are some bugs that you'll run into in specific applications, but for the most part, it's awesome and it works awesome. But if you wanna see an entire video dedicated to CarBridge, again, I'll have links everywhere. Just click somewhere, you'll probably end up there. Next tweak is in control. This is a really cool tweak. It's an expensive tweak, it's 10 bucks, but what it does is allow you to uh, use your Xbox controller or your PlayStation 4 controller on your iOS device. So you can use this on your phone. If you have an iPad, then you can get a really nice setup, especially if you're playing like Fortnite against iOS devices and you're using like a Xbox controller or a PS4 controller, you're gonna destroy them. So for 10 bucks, you can have a crazy unfair advantage to destroy noobs. I don't encourage it. Actually, yeah, I do. I do encourage it. All right, so in control is really simple to set up. Once you download and install it, it's gonna put this application right here on your home screen. So you just open this up and then all this is going to show you is the available devices that you can pair your, uh, your iDevice with. So this is going to work for Xbox One controllers. It's gonna work for PlayStation 4 controllers. I don't have an Xbox One controller, so I'm just gonna show you on the PlayStation 4 controller. So all you wanna do on a PlayStation 4 controller is hit the power button just to turn it on right there. And then if it doesn't show up right here, which it might not because I just paired this earlier, you would just hold the power button and the options button right over here at the top left until you get a flash on the screen, or not the screen, but the light on the controller, just like that, and then it'll pop up right here, almost immediately. So then all you do is tap on this, tap on the little share button right there, and then tap on connect device. At that point, it should connect directly to your controller, and then you can use your controller on iOS games that support controllers. Now I also have an application right here. If you open this up, this is actually going to tell you every single game that works with controllers. So if you're having trouble finding a game that you wanna use controllers on, then you can download this app. I'll put a link in the description. But I'm just gonna show you on Asphalt 9, which I have right here, that it's working on the controller. All right, so as you guys can see, I'm using the controller here uh, to control my car. It's working flawlessly. I'm not having any issues whatsoever. This is going to be really helpful for those games where, you know, you're playing against actual other people, like competitive games. Um, it's because for the most part, they're going to be using, I would say 95% of them are going to be using the on-screen controls. And this is just a huge leg up, uh, especially in first-person shooters or anything like that. So if you want to have the biggest advantages you can get and, uh, really just destroy a whole lot of other people, then I definitely recommend checking out In Control. Last but not least, we have Centaur. Centaur is a really cool notification center tweak. I just really like it when, when a designer and a developer get together and they make something that is functional and it looks pretty. That's what I'm looking for. Now there are some downfalls of this, not downfalls, but some things I would change, which I'll, I'll mention here, but for the most part, I like this tweak, it's pretty cool. So if we go ahead and swipe down just to access the notification center, you can see exactly what this does. It has all of your toggles right there in the middle. You have your music, you can play, you can go to the next. It has your battery indicator, as well as your Wi-Fi and signal and the time. I'm just gonna feel like I'm going through it like, I mean, you guys see, you guys see what's going on here, right? I mean, you see everything, it's cool, right? So you also have all your notifications down there at the very bottom, all your apps. You can actually scroll through all of these. Now, what I would like is if you could tap on an app and it actually show you what those notifications were. You can't do that. You, it's either an all or nothing sort of thing. So you have the show more button. If you tap on that, then it's gonna show you all of your uh, notifications right there. Now, another thing that I would change is that all the notifications are light. I think they should be dark since I selected dark for the notification center. So you can clear all your notifications right up there in the top left, or you can tap on show less and it's going to minimize all that back up into those icons right there. And here's what it looks like when you're playing music. So you have your album artwork right there, the uh, title of the artist and everything. That tweak right there, because I know people are going to ask for it, this one's called Artsy. Uh, it basically uses the album artwork and then puts it in the background, changes up the color of your control center, all that stuff. It's a free tweak if you want to check it out. Um, but I think that just looks really cool. You can also customize the color of the battery uh, when it's charging. So I have it set to blue, as you can see right up there at the top. But let's jump into the settings real quick, just to show you kind of what you can do here uh, with Centaur. 
If we open that up, you can see you have your modules. So there's only four right here. So you have your device info, your music controls, your control center toggles, and your notifications. Uh, if you wanna take those out, then you can. Now you also have all your padding. So if you wanna change up your top side uh, padding, you can do that right there. You can change the corner radius, the darkness of the background, and your translucency. So if we just wanted to change the translucency a little bit, we're gonna change the corner radius to 40, and you can change the colors of the background, the text color, and the battery charging color, like I said. So if we wanted to change this to, so I'll do the backgrounds like a blue purplish color. So at this point, let's go ahead and respring, and it should change the look, the color, and the corner radius, and I think that's all that we changed. So let's take a look once it resprings and see what we've done. All right, so we're resprung. So if we go ahead and pull it down, you can see the corner radius has changed. We also have those apps that are kind of cut off right there. The color is not great. I went a little too light, I think, but you see how it works. That's basically how it works. Um, I think it's pretty cool. But all right, guys, that's all I got for this video. Let me know if you enjoyed this format where you're looking at my face rather than my hand. I'm going a little bit more detail into the tweaks so I can kind of you know, give you a deep dive. And I really want to do that on tweaks that cost money because you don't want to spend money on tweaks that end up sucking, that don't work, or you don't know all the options that are in it. So that's the reason I wanted to do this kind of with these tweaks because all of them are paid. So hopefully this gives you kind of a better experience in purchasing these tweaks if you want to. But yeah, that's it. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.